All so, right, let's get into some right. of these awards. Absolutely. So Best Picture, you know, go check out a lot of these movies. They're all I good mean, films. Yeah, Absolutely. I, mean, I love La La Land. Um, I, I, Helen Highwater I was, was, I was I was really happy at oh. Fake One, you know, yeah, so... <laughs> For, I'll say uh, this real quick. The, f- the first thing that popped into my mind when the when the Jordan producer goes, wait, guys, sorry, it was Moonlight. I thought he was like burdened with white guilt and was like, oh, this white musical cannot. I'm not. I'm gonna, right. <laughs> right. Oh, right, right. Moonlight is an all black <laughs> cast. Oh, no way. Do I want to hear the backlash? I'm just fucking handing this yeah, shit yeah. over. Yeah. That's what oh, I that's thought. Funny. That's what I oh. thought he was doing first. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So sorry. best director. Uh, and this is where Damien Chazelle. Now it's interesting here. Usually, we talked about this with the Doug Benson podcast. It's like, well, best director and best picture. Generally, they yeah, go together. Yeah. Sometimes they split, but it's rare. And uh, I was actually thinking it would split, and then after you and Doug kind of talked me into that, it would be the same <laughs> for La La Land. I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm going with La La Land. But I'm glad that uh, since he didn't win best picture, he was able to get um, best director and its um, youngest. Uh, youngest, youngest director ever. ever. Well, yeah. the, the mm-hmm. other thing, I mean, you got to give him look. La La Land. Again, it's not an easy movie. It's not to an shoot. easy movie to make. Like from a di- from the job of the director standpoint, and again, like whether you like it or not, that scene on that the one hundred and five or whatever, yeah, all that stuff, the camera work, the the camera work, along with um, choreographed dancing, two actors that are not professional dancers that had to train and train and train and train mm-hmm. and train, uh, and all these big dance numbers yeah. that's not that's a tough job of directing on top of that getting great one-on-one acting scenes right and all of this like maybe i'm not going to realize my dream <laughs> moments which is painful right um so yeah i, th- I thought it was good that he that yeah he did that. I, I agree and uh, so best actor uh we have casey affleck won uh, a little bit of an upset i feel like uh, denzel washington got bill married on yeah. this one, <laughs> and uh, he did not look happy. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought this was surprising. I thought Denzel had it in the in the bag, but now it's interesting. Viggo Mortensen was nominated because Captain Fantastic was a decent movie. I love that movie. I, I, I didn't like the ending. I thought it it had like a weird it, schmaltzy it, kind of, but like it didn't really match the rest of the movie. I felt like it was kind of tacked on. Uh, but even that being said, I thought his performance in the film was fantastic. Yeah. But generally, when you see a um, uh, a Best Actor nomination, and there's no other nominations for the film. It's a little. It's more of an uphill climb for that right. actor. Right. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I guess so. Huh? I didn't. You know, I didn't. I didn't see Manchester, and the reason I was going to see it, and then I started to hear all this stuff about Casey Affleck, and so I just didn't want to support him. So I don't. I saw it before. I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> just throwing that out there, which yeah. is the truth. I but. saw it the day of. Oh no, <laughs> that's got to taint you. <laughs> so like from so so for that, I was definitely tainted in terms of like I didn't want him to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't of like course. That he did. I, I, you know, <laughs> so. it's funny. I, 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 it meant to be a joke, but people took me seriously. I'm like, hey, I'm going to Comedy Film Nerds today. What are we going to talk about? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and people, and like people took me seriously, like why that scumbag Casey Affleck won and, and all, all that stuff. And Sharon Houston was all over it. And, so yeah. now, um, performance wise, I mean, it's obviously it's another obviously strong category, but um, you know, I wasn't sure if Ryan Gosling was going to win just because generally the the movies that are a little lighter tend to not. Yeah, I didn't think um, he was. I yeah. didn't think he was going to win. Uh, but yeah, I thought it would have been Denzel over Casey for sure. I mean, Casey did a, a good job in the movie, but you know, you can't really look at that category and go, "Oh, I can't believe they're there." Right. It's, it's still a. A, a you DC know what's a category. drag about that Casey Affleck thing is I really I like Manchester by the Sea and I loved You Can Count on Me, the, his other uh, right. the director's other movie that right I, mm-hmm. and it's just I don't know it just kind of bums me out man like mm-hmm. I'm tired of having to separate or try or should I separate the art from the artist conversation again right. Right. you know mm-hmm. maybe again. just don't be creepy assholes yeah maybe just yeah. <laughs> Maybe just make yeah. good movies and be a nice guy. Yeah, and maybe enjoy don't be a your douchebag. Fucking privileged life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, do you really do you really need to hassle women if you're a movie star? Like, come on. <laughs> like the amount of women that must be throwing it at you. Do you really need <laughs> to fucking sexually assault yeah. them or fucking hurt? Like, do you need to? Like, what the fuck? But the whole entertainment business always uh, seems to turn a blind eye to it, man. You know, they turn yeah, a blind eye to money, man. God, it yeah. doesn't happen in any other industry. Yeah, or, or like politics. <laughs> oh God, I know, but this is the only industry I know. <laughs> so, Although my the bartending industry, so <laughs> which is what I was in before this. <laughs> so best actress Emma Stone. I didn't think this was a surprise. Um, I really thought she did an amazing job. Even when you look at like uh, um, Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone together, if you take their performances separately, I think 
Emma Stone really dug even deeper than Ryan Gosling did, and I really felt like her performance in La La Land was fantastic. Mm. Now, I the like, other performances no. are good, too, obviously. Um, Meryl Streep, you really feel like there's only four Categ- you know, there's only four nominees every year because she seems to take one every right. year. <laughs> like, um, this is a, the, like this is my thing. Like, I'm sure she's good in this. It's Meryl Streep, but there's <laughs> there's no other actresses out there that are doing really solid. Is there some work. kind of rule where if you've been nominated or you won a certain amount of times, you're yeah, ineligible? But... It doesn't even have to be forever. You're in a, you're ineligible for two years. Yeah. Like, Maybe something I, like on, that. Let's just take that glass ceiling for women and apply it to the Oscars. Right. Yeah. You know, just move it over there. <laughs> <It's just> like... <laughs> I, I, you know, and then you see, yeah, you, you see other all, all these other movies come out where they could have nominated somebody. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Let me I, ask, like, I liked uh, Ruth Negga in Loving. I thought she was great. I didn't get to see that. Was how was that movie? It was good. It was good. It was a great. It's another. It's a story that needs to be told, like Hidden Figures, and it's it's about the first one of the first interracial couple, well, the first interracial couple who fought Alabama in Alabama. I think it was. And she's great in Preacher too. Oh, I didn't see Preacher. Oh, my God. It's like, a you know, obviously it's a completely different character. She plays right. a real badass, but it just shows the range of the actress. Sure. And even Janelle Monae in both in Hidden oh, Figures and this, the range Monet. of her, man. Yep. And she's, mm-hmm. I, I knew her as a, she's an amazing singer. I yeah, saw her yeah. open up for Prince. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was fantastic, <laughs> man. But let me, let me ask you this. So did you get to have any conversations with it, like, with any of these folks, are they? Even... Uh, I talked to Viggo Mortensen. Just fighting with, uh, I was just <laughs> fighting with the only time journalist. <laughs> Pussies! They didn't even retweet my tweet about oh, the fight. <laughs> Plus, journalist. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. We, we, we call her. Uh, he calls himself a comedian. Yeah, yeah we yeah. call ourselves a lot of things. <laughs> We call, we call yeah, comedy yeah. film nerds a company. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a, it's, we're all living in a fantasy land. Yeah. It's um, all about letterhead. <laughs> all things comedy is a network. Let's be serious. Uh, I, didn't, who did I, I didn't really talk to... I talked to Vigo Mortensen for a little bit because he sat next to us. Is he cool? Yeah, he was really cool. He's, he was there, I think he was there with his family, so I didn't really want to take right. up much of his time. Were they all living in the RV? Yeah. <laughs> God, Kid had a raccoon God on her damn head. It. If he would do his suit made out of hemp, like I really hope that's a vegan one that says he's like a Green Party supporter. Right. I want him to just show up and just like compost his hors d'oeuvres. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't really. Last time I went, I talked to a lot more people, but it, no, nobody really, like, nobody really. You really kind of burned a lot of bridges from the last time. <laughs> yeah, it? yeah. I was like, oh, close the bar. Close the bar. <laughs> no, but I, I like, like, I don't know. I. I targeted like people I wanted to, you know, like uh, I surf sometimes with Rob Trillo from uh, Metallica and he was there because he scored one of the short films, which I didn't know. So I was oh, like, wow. I saw him on the red carpet. I'm like, I got to go say hi to him. And then we talked for a while. So mm-hmm. and then Nina Garcia from Project Runway, I really wanted to so I went all the way to meet her for some reason. That's strange, frustrating guy to say. But, yeah. <laughs> but we watch it. My wife got me into it. So, you know, so I didn't mm-hmm. really get a chance to. Talk. I've, I've talked to Emma a lot. I've never met Ryan. Didn't you say you tweeted something about Justin Timberlake? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so I'm going to the bar, <laughs> and Justin's down there. And, it, and that opening to the Oscars this year was fantastic. Yeah, I great. thought it yeah. was great. Great way to open the show. And, it was and, great. And, and you know what? I I hope they do that every year because I like the sprinkling this the songs throughout. Mm-hmm. And put it, do a big number, like do a big number. And you already yeah. got one down at the beginning. Yeah, you're so opening the show, getting one down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> and an, and a fucking ass shaker too, man. Right. I yeah. mean, everybody. It's, I mean, it's a great way to. Open. Obviously, the, the stage managers and stuff came. We're going to open, so you guys won't. Please get out of your seats and dance. And he's like, I, I don't have to tell you once you see this. And sure enough, man, when he came through the thing, and they, they walked it's a right, great they came song. right by us. It's, it's a great mm-hmm. song. Yeah. And so. I don't know, halfway through the show or something, I'm going to, I'm actually going to meet my friend Wendy Wilkins, who was working that show. Oh, she nice. She's doing some, uh, who I'm sure you guys know. And Justin was there, and uh, I'm like, and he was just talking to one or two other people, so and he turned and looked at me, and I said, oh, man, what a great opening, man. That was awesome. You had all these uptight people, asses out of their seats, man. It was probably one of the best openings of Oscar I've seen in a long time. Thanks. <laughs> no He just totally shouldered way. me. He shouldered, he shouldered you. He shouldered me. I'm like, motherfucker. 
half my friends write for Saturday Night Live. You wouldn't even have a comedy reputation without them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just shouldered me, man. J. Tim shouldered yeah. you. Mm. Isn't he small? Isn't he a short guy? No, he's about my height, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it because of something happened at a previous Oscars, Murray? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say I told James Franco to yeah. suck it last time I was there. <laughs> so you're like, get off your fucking list. phone, Franco. <laughs> Making us Italians look bad. Yeah. I don't know why I brought race into it. Uh, yeah, listen. And that's I will... the one Italian that's making you guys yes, look bad? Yes, the one <laughs> Italian. Yeah. Really? That's the one, the one. Thing, that, thing that an Italian is... Okay. Nope, we're poker. proud of everybody else. <laughs> all right. All right. I guess I'm going to hang all, all the Irish on Sean Hannity. Yes. <laughs> that's a good example. I will yes, say this, though. That's a, actually, actually, he is making us. Him and Bill O'Reilly have ruined the Irish people. Yeah. <laughs> I will say that, look, man, we've all, and man, it's we've all had bad days. Lucky charms. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? I could have been his agent saying he didn't get a part or something. You're talking to who knows? We all have bad days or whatever. Mm-hmm. I actually met him once on uh, uh, what was that other Coen Brothers movie he was in? I'm blanking on it right now. With Oscar. So do you think maybe he, he was nice to me on that film? I'll say that. But he didn't know who you were. Oh no, there was no reason for him to. know If he would have known who you were, he would have been nicer, right? He probably thought you might have been one of these seat filler folks and was just like, "Oh, who's <sighs> this mope?" Uh, I was dressed too nice to be a seat filler. <laughs> <laughs> this is the guy in the camo pants and the hoodie. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize there was a dress code for comedy film nerds. There is. There is? This was the Oscar episode. Chris, this is my best t-shirt yeah. I'm wearing. <laughs> this is my best camo. I'm wearing a hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we need to go to uh, Best Supporting Actor. Uh, Marshala Ali, I don't think this was a surprise. He did an mm-hmm. amazing job. Well, in me, it. you, and, and uh, Doug all did. Yeah. gave this a should and will win. I really wanted to give it to Dev Patel's hair. Specifically, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we figured he would win. I'll, um, I'll say this: so I saw Lion and I, and I saw Moonlight, and Deb Patel is great in Lion. Sure, mm-hmm. but Marshal Ali again, and some of the credit has to go to Barry Jenkins, as I said. Uh, Marshal Ali is, is is it's when you bring up like the other thing that that Ruth Nega has done. I think it's important because when you see Marshal Ali in House of Cards as as this guy who's just this, you know, slicked up yeah. corporate mm-hmm. political dude. And then you see him as this like a uh, thug in uh, uh, Power Man uh, in uh, Luke Cage. Mm-hmm. I, same guy. It's the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> but the actual name of the show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then you see him in this character. It's like that to me makes this character even better when you see their range, as you right. talked about mm-hmm. before. So Absolutely. And I think, Jeff, and I love Jeff Bridges, man. But ever since, ever since True Grit, he's been kind of doing the same voice. Oh, I mentioned that too. Yeah. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, and I was totally. Like, and I liked, I liked Heller High Water. I thought Chris Pine was a little miscast. But thing. you didn't like Chris Pine? I didn't like Chris Pine. Really? Oh. I thought he was miscast. I really did. Oh, I thought he did a fine job. Dude, I thought he was. Yeah. I, th- I was, I was, I was glad because I was like, he's not being all. You know, Shatnery. Maybe it's because yeah. he was next to Ben Foster. That's my theory, because mm. that's Ben Foster's bread and butter, that character mm. right there, man. And he's so good at what he does that mm. you kind of just forget he's Ben Foster. And right. the whole time I was like, oh, that's Chris Pine. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, Ben Foster is very good at playing the the flawed bad guy, but he does him each time a completely oh, different absolutely. way. This like, guy from 310 to Yuma is yes. completely right. different from this guy. And go back and watch him on Freaks and Geeks Yeah, when he played the special needs kid. Wow. All right. I hope that was him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a thumbs up from Aaron. Right. Aaron says thumbs up. Um, so, best supporting actress, um, Viola Davis. Uh, you know, here's the thing. I I, 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 I predicted that she was going to win. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, as as did Chris. Uh, this was a good category. Yeah. I, I think she had the most screen time of all the other uh, nominees too. Yeah. And that might be a factor in it. So I, I thought her speech was okay, but Murray, you were. <laughs> I thought it was a little. I, I, don't, I thought it was a little. Look how great we are, and thing. And again, you, I'm, I've only seen it once, and when I was there, so I have not gone mm-hmm. back to see it, and maybe I missed something. But I, I thought it was, you know, because this is a giant stroke fest, and sure. we all do this, you know, we all love the stroke. Fest. That's why yeah. we're in it. But uh, I don't. I just. I, it can get a little too aren't we important, look at us, in an already aren't we important, look at us environment. And I felt like hers was a little, there was one speech at the BAFTAs, which I don't know, she must be some British theater woman who was like, at times like these, they look to us artists for the changing of the, like, where's the bar? Uh, 
So it can get a little, and I thought she got a little self mm-hmm. in that. Was it the queen? Was she, uh, yeah. The yeah, yeah. Queen. <laughs> oh, oh, I got a hilarious story about that. <laughs> Tell us your queen back. Oh, it's not a queen story. It's a Prince William story. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, so we're at the Royal Albert Hall, which was awesome. It's the only time they'll ever be there. Probably the only time I'll ever step foot in the Royal Albert Hall. Albert Hall. And uh, the royals were coming that night because I guess Prince William is the head of the Baftas, which the Baftas, by the way, is this charitable organization, unlike the Academy. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not some like <laughs> corporate country club. No, that no. Decides yeah, who gets yeah. Who okay. decides who gets a gold set. So there's like a so Prince William is involved, and it's um, and so we had to be there at like six or whatever because at six fifteen it's locked down because the royals are coming in, and so uh, Stephen Fry hosted it. And he came out, he's like, uh, ladies and gentlemen, could you please stand up for the royals? And uh, everybody stands up, and Prince William and whoever he's married to, I forget, come down the stairs. And Mary, who is always doing something hilariously wrong, <laughs> goes, shouldn't we be clapping? Are we supposed to clap for it? <laughs> like that? Because <laughs> it's dead silence, and this British bitch in front of us turns around and goes, you don't clap for the royals. And I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> so I start clapping. So Mary got every American in the Royal Albert Hall clapping at the Royals when they weren't supposed wow. to. <laughs> God. Well, thank you for not uh, furthering the stereotype of uh, obnoxious Americans Seriously. traveling yeah, abroad. That, that, that was really <laughs> We're just making America great again, one yeah, country yeah, at a yeah, time. Right. UK, and you're God coming knows next. There was no herd mentality. Once one American started <laughs> clapping, the other one's Jesus. <laughs> you didn't have an air horn for when yeah. they went by? <laughs> oh, God. How do you not shoot uh, yeah. <laughs> bottle rockets up in the. <laughs> Oh, try burning this one, Prince. <laughs> um, well, that's good. I mean, Murray, the important thing is you went into another country and made a scene. Absolutely. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Fuck him. We left him a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. The fucking royals are a big waste anyway. <laughs> yeah, because our political system is yeah. perfect. Yeah. Trump uh, 2017. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's running again? He runs every year? <laughs> All right. I didn't know. Did I re- figured the way he's campaigning so much. I know. He's yeah. still campaigning after he won. He would love right. it if it was just always a campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how can he be in business and That's not know the, the phrase, best. don't sell past the yes? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, outstanding. So, well, let, well, let's, because we, we have a time limit, kind of. No? We're fine. We're fine. All right. We have another hour. We have another hour? Could you have just said we had a time limit? Like, I don't want to. I don't have anything to do today. Jesus Christ. I was asking you to say, Graham, we got to wrap it up. We split it up into two episodes. Who's editing that? Yeah. (laughs) It's just one cut. It's part one, part two. Yeah, there's a lot of work, though, Chris. Aaron doesn't have anything to do. There's a lot of shit that I would have to do that I don't want to. You want to set up a Patreon page or you want to cut this bullshit? Oh, wait, hold on. To get one episode. Felipe Esparza's podcast is just canceled after this, so we got all afternoon. Oh, all right. Fantastic. All right. Let's keep going. All right. Best animated feature film. (laughs) 